Hi everyone, welcome back. In the last video, we discussed about how we wanted to have different room types for each hotel. So let's first start by taking a look at our data models. We have hotel and we have room. In hotel, we have five hotels and in rooms, we also have five rooms and all of the hotels have the same rooms. To achieve this relationship between rooms and hotels, we will need to add a foreign key to one of these data types. So that way we can link rooms and hotels. And the place where I am planning to add the foreign key is in the room data type. So let's go to data model and let's add a new field. I'm going to name it hotel. Okay, so now in this field, we can add the name of the hotels to which we want to associate that record or that room to. So I have prepared a CSV file that you can download from my GitHub. I will link it in the description of the video, but the idea is this one. So we have here, we have the header of the table, so this is the type of room, the max guest, the rate, and the hotel to which it is associated. And each one of these is one record. So you can see that all of these rooms are associated to this hotel. All of these rooms are associated with this one and so on. So I'm going to import this CSV into Pega. So I'm going to remove the records that I have right now. And I'm going to click on import. The purpose is going to be add only. Let's choose a file. Click next. So these are the headers of the CSV and these are the targets or the properties that we have declared for that data type. So make sure that if one of these is blank, you select the correct property. Click next, start validation, and let's continue with the import. So here you have it. We have all 25 records here. Let's just confirm this. Let's go to create a new case. So on the next step, on select rooms, on the dropdown, we should have all the records there. But as I mentioned previously, we only want the ones that are associated with the hotel that we selected, this one. So let's remember how this dropdown is working. Let's go to Live UI. Let's open the section for this step. No, it's not this one. Let me click this. Okay, so this is the section. It's composed by other two sections and one button and one field. Okay, so here this section corresponds to what is happening up here. So we want to see this drop down. So let's go back. So this is the dropdown. Let's see how it works. So this is one field. It's the property is PYGID. Uh, let's remember, let's see that this section is in our data layer for room. So that means that our context is the properties that are in that class. So these are the properties that we have access to in this section. Uh, remember that this choose a room, this section is based on a page property of type room. Here you can see the context value is room page. 
and that one is over here. This one. Okay. Let's go back here. Uh, down here, you can see that on list source, we are using a data page and we are using the room list data page. Now, what I want to do is to have my own data page. So let's create one data page that can filter by the name of the hotel. So here on room, in the data layer, let's create a new data page. Okay. Uh, remember that we have two types of structure. We have page and we have list. Page is a single record and list are multiple records. So I want multiple records because we are going to retrieve all the rooms for that hotel. Here on data source, we are going to use a report definition. So now here on the columns, I want to retrieve all the main properties. So the first one is PYGID, the type, the rate, max guests, or the capacity, and the new property, which is hotel. So if I run this report definition, you will see that we are retrieving all of the records in the room table. So we have the 25 records. Now I want to filter by the name of the hotel. So the column here is going to be hotel and the value. Well, the value has to be to, uh, to what we want to compare. So it is going to be to our hotel name. So for example, if I choose this one, save and run, you will see that we will retrieve only the rooms for that hotel. So let's make this actually work with a dynamic value. So let's go to parameters and let's add a parameter, which is going to be the hotel. This is the name of the hotel. And the data type is going to be text. Now here on value, let's actually use that parameter. And remember to mark uh, use null if empty so that if there are no values, then we don't retrieve anything. So now we can pass the name of the hotel and it is going to retrieve only for that specific hotel. Okay, so our report definition is done. Now let's save our data page. Um, our data page also needs a parameter to pass to this report definition. So here, let's add that parameter, which is hotel. The data type is string, which is the same as text. Now here, we can pass that parameter. But since the name of this parameter from the report definition and this parameter from the data page are the same, we can just click pass current parameter page and we don't need to worry about the name. So now let's test the data page. And here you can see that PX result count, we are retrieving five records. And we can find these records over here on PX results. And here are five records. If you want to see the values, you have to expand this. And here you can see the values for that specific result. OK, so now we have the data page and the report definition ready. Now we want to use the data page here. So this data page will take a value. And if you remember, I mentioned previously that we are in the room data layer. So we have access only to those properties from room page. 
but in Chrome page, we really don't have the name of the hotel that we selected. So the name of the property is on our PY work page, and this this field that is called select hotel. So if we open the clipboard, let's click on PY work page. Here are all the fields or all the properties for PY work page for the current case. So let's find select hotel, and here you can find that the name of the hotel is in this property. So how do we access select hotel? Well, we need the name of the page and the class where it is stored. So let's copy this. And let's use it in our section. So let's go back. Let's go to pages and classes. Let's add a new page. And the class. Now, over here, let's try again. The data page is room list by hotel. And let's use PY work page and select hotel. The property value that we want to store in this property. Well, the property is PYJD, so I want to store that property, PYJD. And the property that we want to display is the type of the room or the name of the room. Let's click Submit. Let's save this. And let's see if this works. So I'm going to select the Venetian Resort. Let's click Continue. And, well, I, it seems that it is working. We are only seeing five results. So now one issue that comes to mind to me is what happens if I go back, change the hotel to another one, then continue, and then I add new rooms to this list. As you can see, we have two types of rooms for different hotels, and that is going to be an issue. So what I want to do in the next video is to fix this by removing those rooms that are not associated with the current hotel that we selected. So that's it for this one. Thank you for watching. Bye.